Provost Glover, Dean Abernathy, distinguished graduates, distinguished faculty, and of course, most importantly, the Gator Engineering Class of 2012. A friend of mine, Colonel Ed Sobiask of the United States Military Academy, once told me that if you want people to engage with and remember what you have to say, say it in stories. Now typically telling stories gets me in trouble. And the story that I would love to tell, that of the university's search for a dynamic, charismatic, good-looking, successful leader of industry for your graduation, well, as Dean Abernathy reminded me this morning, that search failed, and that's why I'm here today. <laughs> if you had handicapped the probability that I would be here 30 or 40 years ago, both you and I would probably bet against me. I was born into a low, lower middle class, single income family, flirting with social safety nets like food stamps at the time. My mother was the first in her, in her family ever to graduate from high school, and my father had some college but never graduated. Both were military veterans of the Korean War era, and the best advice that they could give their four sons was to enlist in the military, learn a scale or tr trade, and in so doing, better themselves in life. But I wanted something a little more. I wanted to be a leader, and I wanted to be an officer. So I started with going to the library. I know some of you are probably reaching for your phones trying to identify what this word is. It was, uh, it was an invention before its time. It was basically in the internet in a building. <laughs> you might be able to find one here on campus. I started writing congressmen and senators in the eighth grade, trying to get a congressional nomination. I dedicated myself to athletics and to academics so that I would be a good candidate for the United States Military Academy. And I won an early admission. And once I started at the academy, again dedicated myself to academics to try to graduate near the top of my class, which I, I failed in, unfortunately. I graduated about 7 or 8%. I spent several years active duty in the Army, then left for my civilian career, where I worked my way up through several companies, including eBay, where I was a senior vice president and CTO for two years. Left to turn a company around in Manhattan, and ultimately ultimately helped sell it to AOL, then started a firm where year over year we've increased our revenues and growth rates, helping other companies do the same. Now, along the way, I co-authored two books, now printed in four different languages, both of which were, for a period of time, Amazon bestsellers. Went to advanced programs or got advanced degrees in engineering, business, and management. Ultimately, not too shabby for a boy who grew up, or at least initially, in a trailer park in central Nevada. But there's a problem with this story. While truthful, and even potentially a bit Horatio Alger-esque, it is nevertheless a lie. It's a lie because it makes it seem like it was all about me, and it fails to recognize the contributions of others over the course of my career who have ultimately made me who I am. Whatever little success I've achieved, I've achieved because of them. It fails to recognize that my father gave up several potential promotions to keep me in a high school where I could compete well in athletics and potentially be a decent candidate for USAMA. It fails to recognize my high school guidance counselors who taught me how to interview and ultimately win a congressional nomination for the academy. It fails to recognize high school teachers like Mike Claypack and Judy Ettinger, who ultimately tutored me to help me graduate near the top of my high school class. Colonel Mark Mamula, who mentored me through United States Military Academy. John Ruddy, who happens to be here today and took a huge gamble on me as a young captain coming out of active duty to become a civilian leader and mentored me through my early civilian leadership days. Tom Keevan for convincing me ultimately to start the company we have now. Mike Fisher, who over 25 years has helped me along in my career and ultimately convinced me to get a doctorate late in life. 
My fiance, Heather Brooks, who taught me, unfortunately late in life, that you can both work hard and have fun. You see, my, my successes aren't mine at all. They belong to other people, and only my failures are mine. And I'm guessing if you look deep inside yourself, you might have similar stories about how you got here. So if you would, take just a minute and smile or wave or blow a kiss to those who might be in attendance who have helped you get here. The past, if you look closely inside you, wasn't all about you. And similarly, the future, your future, shouldn't be all about you. At 7.59 a.m. on September 11, 2001, American Airlines Flight 11 left Boston Logan Airport with a crew of 11, 76 passengers, and five terrorists. At 8.46 a.m. it struck the North Tower. And you probably think you know the rest of the history, but I want to tell you a little story about a company on the West Coast about a week after that. Brian Sweetie, who was in the Chief Operating Officer of eBay, devised a plan to try to create or generate $100 million in 100 days for the families and victims of 9-11. Now, an interesting thing happened right about that time. eBay was very similar to most companies of its size and scale, struggling with its type of growth, in that there was a great deal of conflict within the company. Individuals looking at themselves, thinking about themselves, what's next for me, where's my next promotion, when am I going to get my next raise? When Auction for America launched, if you interview the folks who were at the company at that time, they'll tell you, that the conflict that existed between organizations as individuals struggled for primacy, in other words, what's in it for me, almost went away completely. They'll describe that mission of trying to generate $100 million in 100 days for the families and victims of 9-11 as some of the best days of their life. Now, if you think about this, you might have had similar situations in your life where when something greater than you was put in front of you to accomplish, some of your personal problems went away. Some of the struggles you might have had with other people around you go away. Within academic research, we've known this for quite some time. It's called the study of transformational leadership. Basically, that when you give teams or individuals goals beyond themselves that transcend the organization, great things will happen. Now you might ask, why did I tell the story? Why did I tell both of them? And the answer to that, first some context before I give you the answer. The context here is we often sometimes ask ourselves, what or how can I be successful? How can I be great? My answer to that is that's not the question you should be asking yourself. You should instead ask, how is it that I can accomplish great things? And the, accomplish of cost, pardon me, the accomplishment of great things, people will ultimately consider you to be great. I think I've given you the answer to at least part of that question. Be about something more than just you. Do something more than just one person can do. Strive to have great accomplishments, not to be great. And to the extent that you're ever put in leadership positions, create goals and vision that transcend organizations and bring people together such that one plus one ultimately is greater than two. That's your answer. That's my time, somewhat brief, hopefully. Thank you for having me here today. Congratulations on getting this far in your life. Live 
beyond yourself, but not beyond your means. And welcome to the alumni chapter of the Gator Nation.